what is up you guys welcome back to the channel today i'm working on a 2014 chevy cruise customers complain of a check engine light he says his car runs a little rough and he said that it did stall on him once so i'm gonna hook up the scanner real quick we're gonna check for codes we're gonna look at some data and then we're gonna fix this car all right let's turn the key on and I got the scanner hooked up. This is the Altel Maxxis, so this is a GM vehicle. It's a 2014 Chevy Cruze with a 1.8 liter engine. So let's see what we got in memory and see how we're gonna go about fixing this check engine light for this guy. Okay, let's see. We're gonna go into diagnosis and we're gonna do a complete scan of everything. Okay, so the ECM has two codes in there. EBC, the brake control module, also has a fault in there. And, you know, he did say that his traction light was on. And his, uh, I think he said stability track. I'm not sure. But let's just, let, let, let me, uh, we're going to let this load up. And then we're going to go into the engine control module for this. And we'll see what the codes are. All right. So let's go into the engine control module. Trouble code. Go ahead and back it up, please. So let's see, we got a P0171 and we got a P0300 right there. P0171, system too lean, P0300, random misfire. So there's a good chance that this 300 is being caused by the system too lean. So let's look at the fuel trims. Let's look at the freeze frame data and see when that fuel trim code is setting. And what I wanna be looking at, so fuel trim is at 40%, well wow, that's very lean. 40% that means that the computer is adding a lot of fuel because of this link condition So let's actually go and see I want to see the RPM so I can see when This uh, I want to see when this code is setting at what speed So 686 RPM this code is setting at idle. So more than likely we have a vacuum leak on this car So let's go to some live data and let's see what, what we're looking at oh, Why did I get out of there? Okay, so we're going into some live data. And let's look at fuel trims. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start the car. All right, and let's take a look at this. So I got the short-term fuel trim right here. Actually, let me do this. I'm just going to um, O2 sensors. I'm just going to pick a couple of, of PIDs, and then we're going to just look at that. So we don't have to be looking at all of these. Okay, we're just gonna go with those five for now. So the fuel trim, short term fuel trim right here. Uh, it's already at 36, 40. And let's look at this O2. Let's look at these, let's graph them. I'm gonna graph that and I'm gonna graph my O2 sensor. Okay. So here you can see the fuel trim is at 40. I'm gonna rev it up a little bit. And this oxygen sensor is actually stuck lean right now. Um, so let me rev it up and see if I can get this oxygen sensor to change and then we're gonna look at our fuel trims to see if that changes also So keep a look at the rpm right here I'm gonna rev it up Okay, we're at 2500 you can see the o2 sensor changing and you can see the short-term fuel trim is dropping So let's just look at this I'm about 3000 rpm release the throttle and my fuel trims drop and then they start rising again. We're at 18, 22, 28, 30. All right, so this right here is a dead indication of a vacuum leak. My O2 sensor went pretty damn close to zero again. And um, long term is at 38, short term is at 40. So good indication of vacuum leak we're gonna have to go under the hood and see what's going up oh, now it's running rough i can feel it running rough all right let's go under the hood and take a look at that so the things you can do is use a spray bottle like this uh throttle body cleaner brake cleaner fuel injection cleaner or you can just plain water and you can spray the whole intake uh, where you believe you have a vacuum leak now i already did that and i didn't see or hear any vacuum leaks so what i got here is my smoke machine I got this hooked up to this line that goes to the intake manifold. I'm going to turn on the smoke machine. And we're going to look for smoke because I can definitely 
hear a vacuum leak, but I can't put my finger on it. So what I'm gonna do is use the smoke machine and I'm gonna try to pinpoint it that way. So let's just see till we get some smoke out of here. Okay. And let's just wait and see till we see some smoke coming out of the intake. Now remember, you're looking for anything after the mass airflow, that intake boot, anywhere on the intake manifold, uh, PCV valve, um, anything that's not being measured through the mass airflow is gonna give you a leak. So let's see once we have this thing full of smoke. So just to check, make sure the smoke is getting in there, I'm just gonna unplug this. If I could do it. Okay, so there's definitely smoke getting into the intake. And I don't see anything. You wanna look for broken hoses, torn hoses, anything disconnected. This PCV is a very common issue and I'm just surprised that it's not leaking right now. All right, let me turn that off real quick. Well, no leaks, no visible leaks. And there is smoke in the intake. You can tell if you, if you wanna make sure, just pull that off. There's definitely smoke in there. So if I had a vacuum leak here at the boot, I would have seen it. Um, if I would have had a leak at the intake, I would have seen it, but I don't see anything. So, All right, so let's say you did this um, water test. You checked with the throttle plate cleaner, throttle body cleaner, some brake cleaner, uh, whatever spray you use, and you didn't find any vacuum leaks. Uh, very common, like I said, the intake boot can be torn. Uh, that PCV valve is very common on these Chevy Cruises or any other hose. And let's say you didn't find any vacuum leaks. Uh, one other thing you might want to check is your purge valve. This purge valve can be giving you an internal leak and I'm gonna show you how to check that right now. We're gonna go, we're gonna disconnect the electrical connector. We're gonna disconnect the inlet to the purge valve. Since it's normally closed, it should not be sucking any vacuum. You shouldn't hear anything. So let's go do that under the hood. And if we hear vacuum, then our problem is gonna be right there. So let's go do that. So what I'm gonna do is unplug this purge valve electrically. So this way it won't be commanded on by the computer. And I'm gonna uh, unplug the inlet to the purge valve by pushing this red connector up. Push the red connector up, this little locking tab, and you pull it out. So, remember this purge valve has to be normally closed. So right now, if I start the car up, I should not have any vacuum here. If I do, then this purge valve is gonna be bad. So let me start up the car. We're gonna look at some data too on the scanner, and we're gonna look at our fuel trims, and I'll show you how to check this right now. Here, a vacuum leak right away. Here, right here, which I'm gonna plug the purge valve. And watch when I plug the purge valve, I'm gonna look at my fuel trims and see where they're going. So, right now, fuel trims are watch, I'm gonna let go. My fuel trims go up to 40. When I plug the purge valve, you can see the fuel trims are dropping. So, there's 25, 24, 22, 16. 18. Those fuel trims should go negative if this is our vacuum leak. And it should start bringing the long term fuel trim down. There you go, they're going negative. That means the computer is now taking the fuel away. Looks like we found our vacuum leak right here. Look, purge valve is not connected electrically, so it should not be open. So there's extra air that's being sucked in through that purge valve into the intake and that's where we're getting our lean condition right there. Let me just plug this back up. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is order a purge valve. I'm going to put a new one on there and then I'm going to show you the repair after this. If the customer approves it. Five hours later. Finally, the customer approved the job. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to clear the codes. I'm gonna go change the purge valve out and then I'm gonna show you what the fuel trims are gonna look like after the car's fixed. I could have just let you go like this, but I wanna show you guys what it looks like. Let's say the purge valve is leaking, but you also have another leak. Um, you're gonna change the purge valve, but you're still gonna get another lean condition come from somewhere else. So you just wanna verify that whatever you recommended, whatever you change on the car is actually gonna fix the car. So I'm gonna change the purge valve, clear the codes, and then we're gonna look at fuel trims and we're gonna see what they look like. All right, real quick, before I put the, the new purge valve in, this is a new one right here. 
and this is the old one. I took the old one out. One thing you can do is just blow across the purge valve. This thing is supposed to be normally closed, so you should not be able to blow it. But look. And if you blow on this one, nothing. Can't blow across it. All right, so that's one thing you can do. Just blow across it. You're not, you're not going to be able to blow across it if that purge valve is good. So I'm going to put the new one on there. I'm going to start the car. And then uh, I'm going to leave it unplugged just so we can listen and make sure that there's no vacuum um, with the car running with the purge valve unplugged. So let me put this back in there. All right, there's that new purge valve. I'm just going to plug this side in. I'm going to leave this unplugged and I'm going to start the car. And if this purge valve is good, then we shouldn't hear any hissing coming from in here. This right here, this hose goes straight to the intake. And if this purge valve is open, then we're going to hear vacuum, but it should be closed. It's brand new. I should not hear any vacuum there. So let me start the car up. And while I do that, I'm going to go straight into the live data and look at the fuel trims. All right, right now we have them at zero and the long term is at negative five. Once the O2 sensors start working, then the fuel trims are going to start um, adjusting each other. So let's go under the hood and look at that purge valve. Okay, so here's a good purge valve. And this one is fully closed. There's no suction here. And that's how it should be. If this purge valve was bad, then the vacuum from the intake would be being sucked through here. But this purge valve is good. So let me just plug it in, lock it in place, and let's go look at the fuel trims real quick. Okay. Right here you can see the fuel trims are going negative. It's gonna bring this, this long-term fuel trim pretty much uh, back down to zero. So right now it's compensating for the lean condition that it had earlier. And this is how you know that the car's fixed. The fuel trims are now going to be going negative as opposed to being positive. Close to positive 40 is where we had them earlier. So right now, everything's adjusting. Everything's going back to normal. So this car's fixed. No doubt about it. Well, there you have it, guys. Quick P0171 system to lean. Uh, lean condition on this Chevy Cruze. Very common issues, like I said before. PCV valve, torn intake boot and now you know that the purge valve can also give you a lean condition and this doesn't just apply to chevy cruises this this applies to just about any car out there um yeah if you do the water test and you still can't find a leak if you do the smoke test and you still can't find a leak look at that purge valve because if that purge valve is stuck open then guess what that's going to give you a vacuum leak that you're not going to be able to find externally so right now the trims are adjusting this one's a fix I'm going to leave it here. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comments below. And uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I drop new videos. And that's it, homies. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.